Well, hi everyone, welcome to Unit 11 of Pentecostal Explorations of the New Testament. This week we're going to be studying the Catholic Epistles. By way of introduction, it's important to recognize that Catholic doesn't mean Catholic in the sense in which we think about it today. I'm not referring to any element of the Roman Catholic Church. Instead, the word Catholic comes from a Greek construction, katholan, which simply means according to the whole. Catholic should be properly translated as universal. For this reason, these letters are often also called the general letters. The reason these are universal general letters is because their audience and their author may be unknown or vague. For example, no idea who wrote the book of Hebrews, one of the most prolific and longest works of the New Testament. It certainly wasn't Paul. We simply have no idea. All we can do is guess. In the same way, the audiences of many of the general epistles are vague. James writes, for example, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. We have virtually no idea who 2 Peter was writing to. For this reason, 2 Peter had a hard time making the cut of the final canon. Uh, finally, and third, the Catholic letters are ordered in a particular way, and it's important for you to know that as a graduate student of the New Testament. They are ordered from longest Hebrews to shortest Jude, with the exception that even though 2nd and 3rd John are shorter than Jude, they remain connected to 1st John. So this entire block of material we refer to as uh, the general letters. This week, rather than lecture, you're going to be digging into the Donaldson text. I realize that it's over 100 pages of reading. I want to encourage you to read with a particular lens. First, what's the unique context of each Catholic letter? What can we know about the audience, the particular time period and dating, and uh, what's happening in the milieu of this letter? Second, what are the unique theological contributions of each of these letters? What do we find in 2 Peter? What do we find in Jude that we don't necessarily find anywhere else? And third, what are the unique contributions and concerns of the general epistles across the board? I think what you see is that a focus on the parousia, the second coming of Christ, has shifted fairly dramatically from the way it was spoken about in the early letters of Paul. There is a focus on, a pronounced focus on heretical teaching in the general epistles. So pay attention, number one, to the individual contributions of each letter, but then begin to make connections uh, and see common themes, narratives, and threads that run throughout the general letters. After your reading, there is a reflection paper due in which I'm simply asking you, similarly to last week, to take two general epistles after reading Donaldson that you think are the most applicable to the life of the church and flesh that out a bit. If you have any questions or concerns as you move through this unit, Please don't hesitate to email me. We can also set up a phone conversation if that is helpful to you. Finally, there is a research paper due, as you know, per the syllabus, by the last unit of the class, which is the final, the second week of December. I think the syllabus lays this out pretty clearly, but let me reiterate that the structure of this paper is already defined for you. That makes it a little bit easier. Your job is simply to choose any book of the New Testament. It can be Mark, it can be Revelation, it can be Philemon. And to simply treat that book according to the five-fold rubric that was laid out in Dr. Thomas's uh, Pentecostal hermeneutic. So that's theological emphases, structure, canonical context, Pentecost Pentecostal context, and historical concerns. Those are your five sections. And you're simply doing research so that you can write about that letter through the lens of those five sections. Please also note in the syllabus that there are strict rules as to proper research sources. No internet sources other than journal articles through the ATLA database. And no whole Bible commentaries or sources prior to 1970. I want to get you in the mindset and in the skill level of engaging quality scholarly sources. So you want to have begun work on that, and if we need to set up a conversation about it, simply let me know. I'm happy to do that. Hoping and praying that you're going to have a great week during this unit. God bless.